Happy uh, to be here. Good, good that you're happy. Uh, first impressions of your uh, rehearsal? Um, um, how was it? It was overwhelming. We had a lot of concept, and when it when you see it like physically, and it was just uh, beautiful to watch. I was happy. Uh, we can really go. We know where to go from here, and yeah, that's all there is to, to say about it. So I was I was saying in my introduction that you helped Bulgaria reach fourth and, and, uh, and uh, second place. So this is really from the backstage to the spotlight now. Now for you, uh, was this a dream of yours uh, to 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 come to the Eurovision stage to represent your country, Austria, and to be the main singer? Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a dream so much. Uh, I have a habit of just kind of taking things as they come. And during the 2016 and 2017 uh, Eurovision Song Contest, I just got a taste. I got a taste for it, and, um, and people seemed to, to, to smell that I might be interested in it, and just kept prompting me about it. And at the end of two, uh, 2017, I was just really psyched to, to go, you know. So do you think that this previous experience is actually now helping you because you know the drill, you know this sort of press conference rehearsal? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So is it making you feel more safe and uh, easygoing about the whole thing? Well, not just safe. Uh, I just, I just know I have a space where I can enjoy myself. Just yeah. enjoy yeah, yeah. myself. Oh, that's very good. So you're actually already able to enjoy yourself without all the yeah. nerves and the, and, the, and the pressure. Can you tell us a bit uh, more, uh, I mean, I know that many of them already know you, but uh, about your musical background, uh, how was it, and also about the process of composing this song. Okay, just real quick, I'm an artist's son. I have a, a choreographer father and a pianist, cor um, composer, singer, mother. That's how I grew up and um, started working in professional musical projects when I was like 10 years old or something. Uh, at age 20, I felt it's time to learn other things. Went into um, like social work, um, just discovered my, my passion for helping people and for, for helping improving people. Then I got into sports sciences just to understand myself better and get more in contact with my, with my own physical presence. And then I, and during all that time, I still wrote music and, and coached singers. And now I come back full circle to where I actually started. And uh, specifically Some. about uh, nobody but you. Nobody but you. Um, like nobody but you. The first sentence, Lord, I'm gonna get so hard yeah. to. That that came right when we came back from 2016 from mm -hmm. from Stockholm, and we just just played. How would we do it if we were to actually do it? How would we do it? And Sebastian Armin and me, we sat in that grand piano and just imagined, okay, you're on an elevated place and it's, it's dark and uh, you're all alone. And, and what are you gonna say? Lord, I'm gonna get so hot. And so that's, we, visually, we just painted that picture. So we knew the song was gonna start with Lord, I'm gonna get so hot tonight. tonight okay. But the rest, you know, where is it going? It was a, it was a journey for us to, I had to go back from concepting to actually being, you know, okay. just being there and being myself yeah, and what do I want to say. You know? Quite surprising that so it's, an, it's a work in progress since Absolutely. 2016 until now. And actually the way you were describing it, it's also what we can see on stage. So you're really elevated exactly. and dark and then you're just singing the rest of the song. That, that, that is great. Uh, so um, is it true that you, in your Twitter password, was I will represent Austria in 2018. That is actually true. Um, <laughs> my dear friend uh, Vasil, who was in the in the press team for Bulgaria, he handled my my Twitter, uh, and he didn't tell me that my new password is that. And that was in let's say early 2017, I think. Okay. And he proved to be right. You know. Amazing. Wow, that's really amazing. Um, also, to keep it in the family, you talked about your, your, your parents, but I also know that your aunt was part of a super famous group in the 80s called Pepsi and Shirley. I don't know if you heard about them. They were uh, the backing singers in Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, and they had this enormous hit, Heartache. Um, did she influence you? Uh, are you still in touch? Uh, does she know that you're here? Does she like your song? It's so exciting. Yeah, I mean, it was really, it was really interesting for me to know that even f like a distant relative to mm -hmm. me, somebody who wasn't around, was still. Uh, I mean, that is just my family just was like that. 
Uh, my mom, uh, my dad, and dad had this aunt who was touring all over the world. And every now and then she would come by to Vienna, and I would just hop into the tour bus and just play PlayStation or whatever they had there. And um, also later when she was uh, the lead singer for Mike Oldfield and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So she was just that that extra, the extra special aunt, you know? <laughs> the super special celebrity aunt in the family, that's yeah. right. Okay, guys, questions. If there's any Austrian uh, press, we would give preference. If not, we just go <laughs> someone else. They're in the back. Hey, Cesar. Sebastian Diaz from weblogs.com. Congratulations on some amazing staging today. Thank you. Um, so you work very closely with Symphonics. Uh, were you ever considered to be part of the Bulgarian team this year? And if not, would you have considered it if you weren't working with Austria this year? Um, well, uh, Symphonics, uh, I'm also part of Symphonics, and um, this year I was just I was just set on being the lead singer. Uh, I just felt after 2017 I'm, I'm really going to do this, especially I'm a bit like um, superstitious. There were just some signs out there, just numbers, and Lisbon being like a special place for me to perform, I always had like magical things happen on stage in Lisbon and in, in Portugal in general, so I just felt I would be very surprised if it's going to be another, uh, you know, assistance role this year around. So just felt it, you know. The stars are aligned for Cesar. Uh, yeah, here in front. Hello, Cesar. Hi. I'm Sebastian from Destination Eurovision Poland. You make us curious for the very first moment when you are announced as a representative of Austria this year. I'm reading your description about the song where we haven't heard it before, about bloody heart of Georgia and using so many amazing described descriptions. Right now, when you, the song is on and so many people love it because it's so phenomenal, what kind of new descriptions, how you can much more describe the songs from you, from your personal point, from your heart? The, my song, um, my song, since it was written over such a long time, the meaning it changed, and it's like it's an accumulative meaning. At first, it was uh, okay. Where do where do I come from? What did I bring back to the stage? Ten years, no solo singing, just production. So, what did I learn? You know, like find yourself, uh, get in contact with people, connect, help, support, and then come back and, and show what you what you what you learned. So it could be nobody but you, meaning. Get in contact, get in touch with yourself. It could be nobody but you um, connect with people, nobody but you, you know. And it could also be nobody but you, something higher, you know, something that transcends. So there's really like a spiritual side to the song, but also like a romantic. Exactly. It could go either way. Exactly. It is both. Right. It's both at the same time. Okay. There in the back from Bulgaria. Yeah. Taxi. No good to break. Uh, hello Caesar. Um, so my question is, because your voice is so powerful and you've also been a vocal coach in the past, is there something special that you do to keep your voice intact? Thank you. That's a good question, thank you. Um, I learned, I always had, I was lucky with my voice, definitely, so it's not just from nothing, but after I had my sports diploma, I understood that singing is not magic. It's not magic that it's one day it's good and the other day it's bad. There's actual structural things that make this happen. So I understand the value of press practice, of preparation, of rest, of diet. You know, all those things, they affect the voice just as much as any other activity. And this, is, this gave me a, a, a much better you know, control over my performance. I had, like, even when I was 17, I had days where I was just great, and then other days when I was just nothing, you know? And, <laughs> and, and these days I can uh, make sure that doesn't happen, you know? That's it. And during this crazy Eurovision week, do you manage to, you know, like, do some sports or just relax? Actually, how are, you, how are you doing it? Actually, I have set myself some very specific okay. daily goals. Let's, let's hear about that. Today in the morning at 6.30, 6 I was in the gym. Wow. It's a 24 hour gym in our hotel, so lucky. And I just put some work in, like 45 minutes, and I went to, to breakfast, and it was great. If you good. like to run, it's great to run along the river. Yes. Yeah, you should try it. It's really, really good here. Uh, yeah, there in the back. Hi, 
Hi, Caesar. Alistair Birch from Europhile. Can you explain to us what you have against Christmas trees? And uh, what does that say about your attitude to life? <laughs> Where did you research that? <laughs> um, well, I'm a, I'm a huge, I'm a huge uh, admirer of nature. I would rather not kill anything or anyone if it can be avoided, and that includes trees. It's really weird, but uh, that's how I feel. So, especially if it's something so insignificant as a, as a custom, and a custom that is, it doesn't matter one bit to our feeling and mood if we cut down a tree for it or not, so I'd rather not do it. Um, yeah, that's all, all there is to it. Great, great question. Uh, just a question for the head of delegation. Austria hosted the contest pretty recently. Are you ready to visit again? Uh, yes, for Do you sure. Think that is a possibility. Was, for sure, it was a great experience, 2000, 2015, and um, it would be a great pleasure to be the host again for Eurovision. Maybe in Linz. Yes, um, I don't know if they have is the structures. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If there's a venue, which is it would be beautiful. If there is a venue, I totally support that. Bring it to Linz. Okay, uh, another question here. Hello Cesar, Team Austria, JP from Radio International. Um, I have a question, you, you uh, are a songwriter, a lyricist, a vocal producer, now a lead artist, where's your preference more? And my second question is, are you going to work on an album to bring your great music to us? Okay, for the first uh, question, I, I have a lot, of, I have a, lot of, uh, of, a, of a range of things that I enjoy doing, but I always focus on one thing at a time. So right now, uh, putting myself out there occupies all my like vital and creative energy. There's much to do uh, in the transition from studio work to, to stage work, back to my origins. So that's all it is, that is on my mind right now. Uh, as far as um, records are concerned, we have, a, we have a, a plan for the rest of the year, a release plan. Um, it's gonna involve uh, a five song release. Uh, we're not going to go for a traditional like album. I, in my in my opinion, it's it's not the time for albums anymore. You have to be a bit faster than that. So yeah, that's that. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, there. Hello, hello. Yes, I'm Simon from Polish Radio Newsletter. First of all, I can I have to tell you that I'm in love in your voice. Really, it's Thank amazing, you. and it would be disaster for Austria not to qualify with your song. But uh, tell me, I mean, what do you expect from this very strong semi-final we have this year? What can you expect or what do I expect? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I don't mind any semi-final, I, I think. I never worried. I was just focused on, on doing good and I think the rest of my team does the same and I think if we don't make it, it's not because the semi-final was hard, it's because we were be, like, un, like below our capabilities, you know? And if we reach our capabilities, then we don't have to worry about that. Did you meet last year's uh, contestant from, from Austria, Nathan Trent? Did, yeah. did he give you any, also any advice on how to deal with this? Of course, you're experienced, but... Uh, well, Nathan, you you Nathan basically did this. I know you already know this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but let fun. me tell you again. <laughs> Don't let them stress you, blah blah. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, all, I'm with you and all of that. <laughs> and you just say, I know, I know you know. I know you know. You know that I know that I know. Okay. Uh, I actually shared the, the, the opinion uh, that you have such a beautiful voice, not just uh, the singing voice, but actually when you talk, it's like also very oh. a very interesting. Uh, voice, would you share with us, and I'm sure everybody wants to hear you, an a cappella version of, of your song? Sure. Thank you. Lord, I'm gonna get so hot tonight. I'm gonna let the floodgates open wide. I'm in open waters. This is what I need. And though I try to get you off of my mind. And I get no sleep, I'm in too deep I can't let you leave It wouldn't be right letting you go Running away from love 
Ain't nobody but you I can hold on to So am I wrong Giving my all Making you stay tonight Ain't nobody but you I can hold on to Nobody but you 